Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of What a Horse. Yes, sir. We're getting her kicked off. Yep, we Alabama are. Jubilee coming up. So we, we got a special for today. Two, well, actually two, but we, we'll go into that when we come back. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. Instead of telling you about an affordable communication service that will save you money for a rainy day, I'm going to let one of my clients from Columbia Dental Group tell you all about Host My Services. You're not losing any service, your phone calls, you don't drop any calls, have any issues at all. They have the app where if you have an off-site person, they just have the app on their phone, they can use it from there. Like you should definitely get a quote because even buying a whole new phone system is cheaper than what you're gonna pay for with Verizon or AT&T or anybody else through them. I and the quality is great. Just the customer service. Customer service, I talked to him. <laughs> There's two things to remember when checking out Host My Communication Services. Number one is free analysis of your current communication cost. Number two is there's no capital outlay for the equipment. Two great reasons to call 931-581-4411 today and start saving for that rainy day. People in Tennessee are starting a movement. Out. Thank you. To clean up the litter on our roadways. Litter hurts our environment and endangers wildlife. And it affects our quality of life. Here, grab me. Thank you. Help keep our state litter free. Let's roll. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and be a part of the solution to end littering. Thank you. Saving the best for last. That's right. Nobody trashes Tennessee. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. Okay, Alabama Jubilee starts Friday night the 27th and Saturday the 28th. Friday night the show will start at 6 p.m. Saturday night's going to start at 5. Also, it will be at Huntsville this year. That's where they had it last year. Yeah. But they had to move from Decatur. Uh, Jerry Collier, uh, Joseph Goldman, and Chris Zan will mark the cards. And you can call Joan Kemp. You can always call Joan. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. care. You can call Joan. She, she can tell you what horse show is going where. 205-566-6090. I hope to see everybody down there. Yes, sir. You know, a lot's going on right now. We've got the lawsuits yep. going. we got horse shows coming. And uh, I just want people to kind of get out and show their horse. Yeah. 
we're going to we're going to be showing an interview with Jeffrey Howard. He's going to give an update on what's going on in the industry. But everybody needs to remember that things that we're doing uh, is really really important right now to give to the fast oh, yeah. and get ready for the shows. And I also want to tell y'all. We've got a deal cooking with Sam's Town to where you can get a discount on the shows or on the on the uh, rooms. Horse show horse show special. Wednesday and Thursday night $39 a night. Friday night $79 a night. Saturday $89. Hey, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful <laughs> deal now. <laughs> hey. um, it is if you look at motel prices That's down there. That's exactly right. But that was the code down at the bottom was 24 horse. You register online, but if you can't get it to work, call the front desk and tell them that, hey, you got a code, you want the discount on the room? Yes. Because that's, they gave me a good block of rooms, and, that, and that's good because we got a lot of grooms be there, a lot of trainers be there, and they need to save as much money as they can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and they they can party, they can eat, they can have a good That's time there. That's a good there. place, I tell you. It's a wonderful place to, to stay and have fun. Oh, I always enjoy myself, but I like three card poker. And ain't too far from the showgrounds either. No, no. It, so I mean, that's why. Hang I'm a left, hang a right, and you come out right, right beside the, the showgrounds. Show yep. That's pretty slick. Yep. It is. It's real neat. Well, what else do you think's going on right now? I know that, that you're getting over your... Yeah, I'm getting a little better. It's still but, a little sore, but I'm getting a little better. Well, you got to go back for some more tests. Yes, uh-huh. Keep people upgraded on that. Yeah. Uh, I, I do, too. Yeah. I mean, we, we all, all of us, when you get our age, you've got these problems you got to go through. Yeah, but, you're right. But, you, <laughs> when you're young, you don't think about that stuff, but when you start getting older, <laughs> you just never worry about it. Yeah. You say, well, we'll worry about that next week. <laughs> I was watching Handy Griffith, and uh, they was wanting to give this guy a shot, and he said, people up here don't get sick. <laughs> they said, we take temperature. He said, I know when I'm hot. <laughs> he said, said, how do you know when you're hot? He said, because it's dang hot. <laughs> That's the way it used to be. Yep. But things, things have changed now. I have seen a lot of people looking at coats. They're looking at flat shot. Yes. And, and some are looking at the performance horses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But i tell you one thing I do want to do. I'm going to jump the gun here just a little bit. Uh, Allie Jo Jacobs, <laughs> she's all the time planning something. Oh, I, yeah. She she comes up with these ideas, but uh, here here's a video clip that was sent to me. She rode True Blue at the MTSU football game Saturday. She mm. per, she took the football to center field or to midfield. Now, I'm baseball in too. Yeah. But what what's neat about this is uh. We're going to start seeing her in uh, On True Blue. Oh, yeah, I'm going to say so. Well, yep. they're, they're, they're fixing to, they're going to collect a bunch of straws. Yeah. And then they're going to send him to the happy ground. And uh, then next year, Allie Joe's going to break out on him. But if y'all can see with this video right here, Allie Joe can ride him right now. Let's, oh, yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and show Allie Joe's video. Mr. True Blue, a talented six-year-old Tennessee walking horse led by R.M. Kellett and Spencer Benedict Stables is a multiple world champion. He won the 2022 four-year-old world and world grand championships and is the reigning 2024 walking horse center world champion. Ali Joe Jacobs, a nine-year-old equestrian, rides, owns, and loves Mr. True Blue. She became the youngest Equitation World Champion just after her sixth birthday and has since earned nine world championships and a world grand championships. Allie Jo is the only person to win both Equitation and Performance titles in the same year and even triumph in three different divisions on the same day. Meeting Mr. True Blue and Ali Joe at midfield to accept today's game ball is the 2024 homecoming director, Anna Jacob Ellis, and SGA president, Makai Mosby. Thank you to the Jacobs family and Mr. True Blue for joining us for today's homecoming game. Now he's 
six-year-old stallion yeah. that uh, handled by a nine-year-old little girl. Yep. <clears throat> Says a lot for her breed, a lot oh, yeah. for her horse. That's right. Says a whole lot for it. And I didn't realize some of that that they read off that Ellie Joe had been was the only one to ever win the equitation and an open world championship in the same year. Mm. That's, 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 that's very neat. That's, that's very good. I always say she's a talented young rider. Well, she, she does it all. She's yeah. even into the spotted horses big time. But we, we've got a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, going on right now with our lawsuits. But what I'm more concerned with is what's going on with a lot of the other areas, not just Middle Tennessee, but other areas. I got a video from a gentleman, and, and we'll show it in weeks to come, that uh, they was palpating, but then started slapping the passenger of the horse. And I was wondering, what is that about? I mean, let's, let's face it. We, we said something about some of the BMOs were more ethical and honest about their inspections. Yeah. And uh, then they show up after the first day of the celebration, all of a sudden they start giving real close to the same number of violations as we had the problem with two of the other ladies. Yes. Now that, that, that just, that's BS. Yeah. I mean, they they come up with this stuff and they say, well, we'll do this so we can prove. But what about all them times before then? All you're doing is saying, yeah, we were wrong. We was either wrong then or we're wrong now. Well, it's it just like anything else. It's just like a coach. And they probably telling them, if you ain't going to be a team player, you're going to get off this team right here. That's and it. so you have to do what the coach say do. And that's what the BMS is doing. They are doing what somebody else in charge is telling them what they need to do and how they need to do it. You are the second person that's told me that, and you're the trainer. And this other gentleman's not a trainer, but I'm not going to call his name. But he's well versed in the Horse Protection Act, and he he knows about the inspections all around. Yes. And that right there is exactly what I think. I think, in all honesty, they were threatened in what they were doing. Yeah. That if, hey, if you ain't gonna turn horses down, we're gonna find someone to take you well, place. Well, Jerry, is like if all the spotlight is on somebody and they don't want that, so they're gonna say, hey, you need to do this or we're gonna change your position or whatever. And I mean, and that and that's just the way I feel because you got, just like you say, some of them was doing real good at the beginning and then all of a sudden they change. Yeah. And that's just the like- The horses don't change. The horses don't change. And that's just like now, they change that rule here at the, celebration by pulling the chain down behind yeah on the horse and said and writing and, and writing people up a little chain well they're inventing they're inventing yeah. things they're, they're and for years for years a ring injury was not a violation now all of a sudden it's a violation yes what what they're doing our horse is in such good shape that they have to create different avenues to be able to give a violation and they know it but they, they don't seem to care, which makes me believe more and more that just like when Vilsack was questioned in Congress, he, he was very evasive in what he said. And they even told him how, how they disappointed they were in what he was doing. His wife worked for the Humane Society of the United States, and we know the Humane Society of the United States is the one that's asked in for all of this. So I'm hoping that when it ends up that there is, because it only takes one. Yes. One domino falls and the rest of them will fall because they do not want to be left out there holding the bag. Number one, testifying under oath. If you lie, it's a felony. I'm wondering if there's not just one whistleblower in that little group that's going to say, hey, I ain't getting on that stand in line for them. They did this. And you got to remember now, there's always a, all different types of recording devices that you can get to record what people are saying. So I am wondering what's going to show up in the next few months that's going to be devastating to a lot of people.
Yes. Because I honestly believe out of all of those, there's one, there's got to be at least one that's ethical and honest. So we have a video with a gentleman named Jeffrey Howard who has meetings all the time about our standings, and he's going to explain a lot of that to you in this video right here. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jerry Harris, and I am here at the Walking Horse Report with Jeffrey Howard. We're going to share some information with you today on the uh, situation with the industry, and I appreciate you taking this time to, to do this. Yeah, thanks, we, Jerry. If you got anything you'd like to say out front, no, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I appreciate you doing this and allowing us to keep everyone informed. And I, I've seen a little bit of your questions, so I think we'll get, we'll get everything covered. All right, well, let's start off with this. Uh, how are the lawsuits looking right now? All right, so um, I think everyone knows that there are two lawsuits. So the Wrights, um, Michael, Josh, and Casey Wright have a lawsuit uh, challenging the enforcement of the existing HPA. Um, that is over in Jackson, Tennessee. Um, the uh, government just um, filed their amended motion to dismiss in that case, and so the industry attorneys from Toradon Law um, will file their answer to that, which is due on um, October the 18th. So uh, we'll hear about October the 18th on both lawsuits, but uh, October the 18th is when we will answer that, uh, and that will get that case moving forward again. I think best case uh, or best guess from our attorneys is sometime uh, mid-May for uh, the judge's decision in that case over there. In the rulemaking case, um, we we have an agreed upon briefing schedule um, with the um, Department of Justice. So um, the, our motion for summary judgment um, uh, from Toradon, the industry's motion uh, for summary judgment is due October the 18th. That briefing schedule should wrap up uh, around December the 20th. Uh, with a decision to come uh, in January prior to the February 1st um, effective date um, of the rule. So if that were to get pushed out or anything changed, the, the industry would definitely file for an injunction uh, to stay the effective date uh, of February the 1st if the judge hasn't ruled at that point in time. So uh, that's kind of the two updates there um, as, as it relates to the lawsuits. Again, those motions back and forth uh, starting on the 18th um, will be made public. Um, where people can see them uh, through industry publications, through the Breeders, the Celebrations, all those websites like that. So we'll get them over to you all as right. well, Jerry. Well, you answered question number two already okay. on the injunction part. Uh, what do you think would be the advantage of putting the BMOs or even the guards on the witness stand? <laughs> um, I probably have to be careful how I answer that, right? Uh, you know, definitely I think uh, there are statistical anomalies um, that raise questions in the industry with regards to are there directives being given other than just enforcement of the Horse Protection Act? Um, because if you look at there are some wild variances um, of VMOs past violation rates, um, uh, I think everyone knows that the industry questioned two VMOs specifically, sent letters to the secretary, sent letters to the office of the inspector general. Um, regarding their uh, enforcement uh, of the Horse Protection Act. And at the, this year's celebration, um, the, those that had vastly lower violation rates than those two VMOs that we questioned, somehow, uh, after the first day of inspecting at the celebration, they rose to the level of those two or even higher. So I think it would be normal for the industry or anyone to question if someone's two and three year behavior changed at one horse show after you sent a letter questioning their percentages being lower than those of the two that you were questioning and they then went higher than those two. Exactly. So sure, we would love to know how that is. What happened to, to cause that? Were there policy changes? Were there directives from above uh, that said, hey, you're not turning down enough? Maybe they thought the others were doing a better job than them. We don't really know. So yeah, I, w I would love to be able to see um, those questions get answered. I think everyone that had a horse turned down uh, at this year's celebration would, would feel like that. There, there would be some uh, validity placed in that, yeah. Well, I, I agree 100% even as far as bringing some of the guards in. Mm -hmm. we, we know the guards have been privy to conversations that we haven't. 
and right. I, I think it would be good. Uh, it would be, it's been pointed out the number of false entries made on the inspections and even the work that Frank Eichler did in the research showed where there was false entries as far as taking a non-HPA violation mm -hmm. and calling it an HPA, listing it in the numbers. Mm -hmm. What's your feelings on that? So I, I think um, Frank has done a nice job of analyzing that and now when we report those statistics and even we've gotten the USDA now uh, as part of the rulemaking, um, they have put in soaring violations and taken out some of those others. But it is, there is no question that to put all violations, uh, to say that all of those are soaring violations is absolutely not true. From heavy chains to heel to toe to illegal shoeing, things of that nature. Um, and then that doesn't even, doesn't even come into, I think where you were headed there is, is you have to remember that uh, until August of last year. So the Horse Protection Act came in in the 70s, right? right. Uh, and many of their training manuals had said a ring injury is not a violation of the Horse Protection Act. Right. And since August of last year, now a ring injury is a violation of the Horse Protection Act. So we're talking about injuries that aren't even on the limbs of the horses. Um, whereas we don't agree with those being a violation right. either, but you're talking about on the tail uh, on uh, you know all sorts of different places, saddle rubs, things of that nature, right. girth straps. I mean th that are that are causing these slight rubs and things of that nature that aren't even on the limbs of the horses. Uh, so definitely, there's um, when you start comparing statistic to uh, statistic. Um, for years, those weren't even right. classified as a, as a as a HPA violation, and now they are. So um, it's a very interesting thing. It's something that we'll challenge uh, moving forward. So, All right. just and, and I'm doing this just so members of the industry will understand the amount of work that uh, Frank Eichler has contributed. And I'm going to include two questions into one. If we had had to pay someone to do the research and the work mm -hmm. that Frank Eichler has done. How much do you feel, and I know this is just a, a guess, but our cost for these lawsuits, I know everybody's contributing to FAST and, and doing everything under the sun, but how does that relate to the amount of work that Frank Eichler has done? You know, I don't think I, we couldn't put a, a, a price tag on what Frank has saved us uh, in money, but I think it's safe to say he's spending more time than our attorneys spend on it. Right. Um, and so, uh, if you want to take the, the total bills there, uh, if he were charging a similar rate, you know, you'd be talking about double what it has cost. I think um, I've spent a lot of time with Frank over over uh, since 2009, really, right. on, on these types of issues and. Uh, you know, he, he does he does two things really well for us. One is he's a legal mind within the industry uh, that has has the ability to understand some of these motions, terminologies, things that are happening. He's able to write uh, letters and initial drafts of briefs for the attorneys or, or to send them uh, kind of where the industry's coming from. So I think that is invaluable uh, of what he brings to us from a, a legal strategy. Um, he, he's a part of uh, the celebrations kind of leadership group. He's uh, on a call weekly with members from the trainers, the breeders, uh, and the celebration to kind of help guide, you know, what does this mean? Here's where we go, you know, timing of things of this nature. And then two, he does a great job with the statistics uh, and, and being able to track those, um, analyze them, uh, make them make sense. You, you referenced the non-HPA violations, right. the soaring violations. So he works extremely closely with uh, Rachel Reed over at the show HIO. She does a lot of work there, and 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 there's a lot of people putting in a lot of work, but nobody's putting in more uh, to your point than Frank is, and um, he's just invaluable to us, uh, and, and a good friend of mine um, as well. But uh, has done a tremendous amount of work uh, on this issue and definitely wants to see a resolution uh, in the industry's favor, um, thinks that we are being wronged, um, and, and I think some of that motivates Frank. Uh, he wants to see uh, it be right, it be accurate, it be, um, you know, uh, fair, and he doesn't feel that it's, it's that way, so uh, I think that's a driving motivation. Definitely Debbie's involvement 
Um, but it's more than that for Frank. It, it is really about the industry and him feeling like they are being wronged. Well, there's one thing about Frank Eichler. If you want the truth, you're going to get it. Yes. He, he, he's going to flat tell you the truth. And sometimes, in, in, and I was at the conversation, sometimes I did not like the truth, <laughs> the answer. But he, he was correct. So these are things that... Uh, a lot of people misunderstand about him. I yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm telling you, he, he is he is putting in the work. Whether yeah. you agree with everything that's being done or not, he's putting in the work to try to get a resolution for the industry. That's right. Now, here, here's a question that's for everybody out here, really. As an industry, other than showing horses and contributing to the FAST Foundation, part of the legal fund, and we're running, we're running three ads on every show trying to raise these funds. What can people do? I mean, what can the individuals do out here? I know we need to continue to show horses. Mm -hmm. We need to continue to bring them up for inspection. But what can we do? Is there anything the industry can do that would help more? Yeah, I definitely think, um, one, thank you for all you're doing to help uh, raise the money. That is a, a necessary evil here. Um, but I, I will say this on that. Um, the show cards and exhibitor cards, uh, that's a way, and everybody has contributed there, multiple HIOs, that's not just a one HO, Curtis Pittman show, uh, the, both of those HIOs are requiring those, so it has brought in uh, a lot of funding, um, private donations, horse shows are doing it, so I think people are really contributing, both large and small, every one of them matters, and, and so that's good, but here, here's what people can do. One is stay informed. Um, the facts will help drive um, us to the right uh, solution so be careful to listen to uh, rumor and innuendo I mean it's just stick to the facts every week um, we had it today at 930 two representatives from the trainers two from the breeders two from the celebration and Frank meet every week so people are informed about what's going on um, and so I went to a meeting in Kentucky um, last week for the Kentucky trainers and some of them just to make sure they have it but number two is is document what happens in inspection. Vet reports before, vet reports after, video, written statements, um, that is the most important thing. What we don't want to see is, is, well, they said this, we got to have that on camera, or hey, they did this, or my horse was, we have to have veterinarians looking at these horses, making sure that we validate um, that they are sound, that they are in compliance with the Horse, Protect, uh, horse Protection Act, um, so that is something. So just stay informed and document inspection. We don't need stories. We need facts. I'm glad you said that because I received a message this morning, a video, where a gentleman was videoing the inspection and you could hear the BMO telling him to stop videoing that he needed to hold the reins. So that's one thing that people need to realize. I do not believe, or I believe that they can stop you from videoing if you're the custodian of the horse, mm -hmm. but you can have someone else to video, and, and in Tennessee, that is a law. So they cannot stop you from videoing, but everybody needs to remember if the custodian is going to video, he needs to wear a GoPro or other device. Hands-free device. Mm -hmm. Right, I've got two or three different ones wide angle. The trainers have bought two, I believe. Yep. So they're ready available and people need to realize that what they say is vital too. Yeah, absolutely. A absolutely. I mean, like I said, I, I can't imagine that anyone, government or, or otherwise, would care to know just what the facts are. That's a, that's what we're doing. We're not, uh, we're not into the, the business of making accusations. We just want the facts and what those show. All right. Very interesting. That is. Very interesting and some good points and people need to uh, believe it. The, the people have asked why they don't hire one person to record video out there. Each individual will have to do it okay. for it to be protected. You can't just say, like, my video belonged to me. That's yeah. why I never charged anybody. Mm -hmm. It belonged to me. Nobody could say I was doing it for this and I was doing that. I was doing it for me. me. Okay. That, that protects me. I've yeah. got it for the news show. Other people, if they want their video, they need to get them a GoPro or video it theirself. 
that way it's protected. It belongs to them. Yes. Show didn't pay for it. The trainers didn't pay for it. Their celebration didn't pay for it. Show management didn't pay for it. You paid either paid for it or you did it yourself. yourself. Okay. Then it's protected. Yes. That that's the way I understand it. Uh -huh. All right. I'll let you do yours, and then we come. We got something real good coming up. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Giles Dunn is a leader in both cultured and lab-grown diamonds. Located at 234 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee, Giles Dunn is well known for his beautifully designed jewelry. From that special diamond for your special wedding day to the one that says I love you more, Giles Dunn is the place to shop if you want to say it with diamonds. Open five days a week and always ready to assist you in that one in a lifetime purchase. To set an appointment for cultured or lab-grown diamond viewing, call 931-563-7800. Hey Tennessee, Ross Chastain here, the guy who likes to smash watermelons on the front stretch at Nashville Super Speedway. But you know what I never smash? Safety rules. Racing's all about control, and the same goes for life on the road. So use your melon and don't mix drinking and driving. It's like trying to race with a busted engine. Be a pit crew hero, and if you've had a few, pass the keys to a sober friend, because we're all racing toward a safer Tennessee, and we want you there at the finish line. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax-deductible donation as fast as a 501c3, and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. Look at there, James. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that commercial, <laughs> Jerry? Say, "Where's that cap? Where's that cap? You got him scared to death. <laughs> what, what, what are you? What are you threatening to do to him?" <laughs> hey, we uh, during celebration this year, there was a legend that was retired. Now, we don't have enough time to go back to the beginning, but I can remember this horse uh, in the ring, all by himself in the championship preliminary class. And it, it was it was a sight to see a horse put on a show that he put on. But we're only gonna go back to when <laughs> when the McDonald's bought him. Yes. And Robin and Bruce, uh, Robin started showing him and we're gonna start then. I believe they they bought the Heisman, Mr. Heisman in 2016, and uh, let's just go with the video because it's the video is of Mr. Heisman. There is the 2017 is when Robin started showing, and this one was the first, first of his many, many victories, 15 to an under specialty winner, Mr. Heisman and Robin McDonald. Bruce and Robin McDonald. I tell you, it's a good horse. Yeah, he was. I tell you. Right there he is at the uh, Elite Owner Amateur Ladies Stallion winner. That was at the 2017 celebration. Robin McDonald for Bruce and Robin McDonald of Lake City, Georgia. Earning all five first place votes. Would you send them out to the Blue River? First time I've ever seen this horse right here. He was a two-year-old. And he come to Pulaski, and nobody know who he was, and he shocked everybody in the yeah, world right there. Sure he, did. With Hugh Taylor riding him. Uh -oh. oh, yeah. Here's Bruce and Robin, amateur 50 and over specialty. That's always been a good horse. Hey, he, he's been outstanding his them, whole life. Then one bucket full of... A wheelbarrow full of blue ribbons. Oh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. You just, uh, I can tell you. Now, everybody knows where this is. That's Tunica. Yeah. 
this horse, if you watch these videos, you're going to see that he never changed. Yep. I mean, he, he is a walking piece of work. I was once told by one of his trainers that said, Jerry said, the truth is, you can get him out of the stall any day of the week, put a set of fours on him, and he's going to do what he's doing right there. And I believe that. It's 2018. There's Robin McDonald again. Bruce and Robin McDonald of Lake City, Georgia. All three judges in agreement tonight from Mr. Heisman. Robin McDonald makes the blue ribbon. Bruce and Robin are great for this oh, they industry, are. but that yeah. horse right there, he says a lot for this industry. Mr. Heisman, Robin McDonald is up for Bruce and Robin McDonald of Lake City, Georgia. Robin McDonald riding Mr. Heisman. We can sit here and talk all day about oh, him, yeah. but to be honest, the videos say it for us. We don't, have, right. to, we don't have to talk. Just let them listen to the announcement. Well, that's just like I said about videos. Now, you see that was 2018. Man, make you this excited to watch him right, right then. It was it. Some horses you can sit and watch all day, and I've always yep. compared Mr. Heisman to the chess set. Yeah. And the knight in the chess set, he, he just the way he carries his head and everything. Yeah. He doesn't have a real long neck. He's got a compact. Yeah. But he the way he is built, he is a walking piece of work. It was something I thought when they said they was retiring him. It's from this is video right here, the first thing I thought yeah. about. But it would be so nice to have it. Oh, congratulations again to our unanimous Avatar 60 and over champion, Rod and Robin. That's Mr. Heisman and Robin McDonald up. Robin and Bruce McDonald, the proud owners. Atlanta, Georgia. Mr. Heisman. Robin McDonald rides the Bruce and Robin McDonald entry in Lake City, Georgia. Our elite owner amateur, Lady Walking Stallion Matter, Mr. Heisman. Robin McDonald makes the good ride for Bruce and Robin McDonald of Lake City, Georgia. Mr. Heisman and Robin McDonald. That's a special kind of horse, buddy. It's a special kind of horse. I mean, he's good every time you look at him. Oh, yeah. Tim Smith is riding Bruce and Robin McDonald's entry of Lake City, Georgia. Tim Smith and Mr. Heisman to the That's blue. That's pass there. Yep. Uh, wearing the floral horseshoe with the tricolored ribbon. He's a blue ribbon winner tonight in the specialty championship, Mr. Heisman. Tim Smith making the blue ribbon presentation for Bruce and Robin McDonald, Lake City, Georgia. Brings our show to a close. Can't tell the difference. That's right. I mean, he just—he's getting older, but he's, he's just maintaining exactly what That's he right. was as, as a two, three, four-year-old. Yeah.
What else can you say? Hey, <laughs> I mean, he just, that, that's why I said, I'm gonna let the video do the talking, buddy, because video don't lie. Yeah. yeah. We're looking at years from 2017 to 2024. Yeah. That's seven years. And I believe that we went back, I probably got every one of those victory passes yeah. from the two-year-old year on up. Yeah. <laughs> Let me do it. See video of three different riders riding this horse. As this. Still doing the same year. I believe total there was uh, five different people that rode him. As far as showing him, I believe I'm correct when I say that. Because uh, when Brandy was training him, I believe his wife showed him that. Yeah. Now Hugh Taylor had him first. Yep. And then Taylor. Brandy started showing him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Kelly Mills wrote it, showed him. So that's three, five, six pe yeah. different people rode this horse, showed this horse right there. Bruce, he's a one of a kind of person. Hey, he's a super good guy. He has respect of a lot of people in this industry. A lot of people. Something you don't see very oh, yeah. often. <laughs> That's right. That horse has won World Grand Championship under Robin, Bruce, and Randy Moore. Yeah.
sitting here and trying to see a difference in this one. And I'm just not seeing it. Classic horse. Yeah. With Bruce McDonald in the iron. Bruce and Robin McDonald on the entry from Shelbyville. It's Mr. Heisman and Bruce McDonald, our amateur classic horse winner. Well, there's no telling how many victory rides this team has made. Mr. Heisman. I tell you what, as a classic horse, yeah, he looked just like he did as a two and three year old. Yeah. He's good once they just get it done. But, get done I mean, you're right. You get there, you ride, you keep going. <coughs> that was last year at Tunica there. Now you just think on this horse right here, you just look at how many other breeds have done as much winning. That's right. You know, as this horse right here, a Tennessee walking horse like this. I believe we've shown 30 victory passes. There he is. When he hit the 15 after that, Bruce put him into the classic horses. But yeah. he, he could have won other classes. Oh, yeah. Easy. Very easily. As smooth as silk. Yep. People are watching this video right here. Y'all are watching a legend in the walking horse industry. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. The guy riding him is a legend, too, mm -hmm. really. <laughs> but that horse, he has been here. He has, I mean, gone through several trainers. Bruce McDonald is up for Bruce and Robin McDonald of Shelbyville. Mr. Heisman and Bruce McDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, our world champion born in 2006, 18 years of age, and they find themselves in victory lane tonight. Bruce McDonald tells us this is the final show for Mr. Heisman, and he goes out on world champion tonight. Bruce and Robin McDonald, the owners from Shelbyville. Ladies and gentlemen, set them off with your applause, Mr. Heisman and Bruce McDonald. Legend retired. That's right. He's a good so horse. That's that's uh, that's pretty good. Bruce and Robin were uh, my favorite owners. I know the Baskins yeah. owned him, and then Bruce bought him from them. But that horse is just uh, he, he's very special. Yeah, very he's special. A, he's a nice All right, horse. you do your thing, and then we will we'll finish up with some horse video. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. 
If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you'll own one tomorrow. That's a fact. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. And this is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse coming up. All right. We are going to go to Alabama Jubilee this weekend, mm -hmm. so I thought it is only appropriate that we show some video from last year's yep. Alabama Jubilee. And uh, they had a good show last year, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that place is packed with horses this year. Would tickle me to death. There's Formal Line and Carol Baxter. That's a nice horse right there. Really hey, that's horse. a super good horse. That was he was reserve at celebration this year. Reserve yeah. World Grand Champion Pony. And Carol does a great job of showing. Yes, she does. Yeah, she does. She does a good job. Here's Mayor Bill, Dan Waddell, George and Kim Lewis. That horse right there has earned his way. Yeah. He's done that. He was reserve world grand champion in amateur division this year. Old Chills. They won't be there this year because Chris Zan is a judge. Yeah. So they won't get to show in Alabama. And I hate that because I love watching Allie Joe show. Yeah. Country lineman and B.B. Beasley. Owner Beth Beasley. I I'll be that glad. He was doing pretty good. They yeah, were getting I, a lot better. Yeah, I did too. And that tickled me. I'm hoping to see them girls back in the show me ring too. this year. You just want cookies. I know what you have. <laughs> well, they still cook cookies if we call this. <laughs> <laughs> them girls are something special. Magazine, I'm big enough. Tell you what, that I'm big enough. Oh, that's a nice hey, horse. Hey. Yeah, I'm gonna take it easy. A good little pony there. I believe he pulled, proved that this year. Yep. Got here your 
2024 yeah. World Grand Champion Pony. Jimmer's Here's Jimmy, Jimmer's Country Girl. She, this one won a World Championship and a Reserve World Championship. Yeah. I've liked that horse ever since I saw her as oh, a yeah. two-year-old. Just, just, she just, as the class goes on, she get, seems to build. Yeah. Just keeps getting better. There's a Super Bowl MVP and BBB. Super Bowl MVP. That was BBB. devastating BBB. loss of oh, that yeah. horse. And the rights to be in goal of 2023 championship. And 5159 is Super Bowl MVP. BBB is the rider. There's quite an honor. Tell you what, that, that horse right there. They, they, something else. Oh, yeah. And I mean something else. And girls do a great job of showing that horse. Beth, no, real good job. Beth doesn't take a back seat, I can tell you. No. Honor and remember in Dan Waddell for George and Kim Lewis. That's a nice horse right there. Yeah, that's a super nice horse. And now making that walking horse state victory pass. Super nice. Some good owners too. Yep. Mighty fine people. Mighty fine. Dan do a good job with that horse. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I want to remind everybody, I guess we ain't got but a little bit of time, remind everybody about the discounts at Samstown. Yep. I guess that's it. Be so safe. we're saying goodbye. <laughs> we, we overrun ourselves this week. See everybody next week. <laughs>